I'm most curious about how you found the ideas of liberty and how you found Austrian economics because you guys probably weren't talking about that on, on the wrestling stage. Well, you'd actually be surprised. That's the, the first time that I really started hearing some of the terms was from one of the other guys. I told him that I felt like I was pigeonholed because I felt like I was a conservative on some issues. I never felt like I was a liberal, but I also believed that, you know, um, as far as some of the social issues, the government just shouldn't be involved in those things. And he said that I, you know, sounded like a libertarian. I'm like, you know, we're friends. Please don't call me names because I will fight you. And um, that's where I heard, first heard the term. From there, it was a bit, really a bit of an evolution, uh, just discovering the writings of, say, Hayek and Bastiat, and Mises and the Rothbard, and even guys like Judge Napolitano and John Stossel, and then, of course, uh, Ron Paul. Eventually, what happened was through my political acquisition of knowledge or edification, I discovered the term Austrian economics, but I didn't even know what it meant. I'd been intimidated by economics my whole life, never took a course in economics because I thought it was all about numbers. I was confusing economics with econometrics. Once I made that realization, everything changed for me, and, and I really realized that it was more of observational science. That's very cool. I, I think a lot of academics, particularly in economics, they have you know, what Hayek called this pretense. The uh, fatal know, conceit. But also pretending to be hard science when in fact humans don't translate into a simple equation because we act. And that, that you know, if, if people find this out, the professional econom economics profession could be in deep trouble. And as Bastiat talked about, you know, the difference between a, uh, a bad economist and a good economist is that a bad economist will look at the direct intended consequences of a policy where a good economist will contemplate the unintended indirect consequences and the destructive consequences of the policy. You've decided to run for public office. What are you thinking? <laughs> um. The federal government, and I'm running for local office, the federal government is what gets all the press and all the media, of course. Um, but local government has a tremendous impact on people's lives. And I also believe that if we are going to have positive change in this country for the reasons that we've talked about, the federal government is not just one day going to say, oh, you know, we're wrong about all this stuff, you know. Um, the Tenth Amendment really does matter. The states should be making many of this, these decisions. The Constitution doesn't empower us to do these things, so we're prohibited from them. You know, not the not the thought of well, the Constitution doesn't say we can't, so we can. They're not going to do that. What's going to have to happen, in my estimation, is that the localities and the states are going to have to force the federal government back into its constitutional box. There has to be a philosophical sea change among if not a majority of people, at least among a large enough minority that that can happen. It seems like professional wrestling is precisely the right training for politics. <laughs> you know, for years on TV I played a, a twisted, demented, deplorable, awful human being with absolutely no social redeeming values. I'll be a great politician. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, I, I think, you know, I. I do think that the right person, you know, can do some some good things, and uh, yeah, that's what I hope to do.